zero practice, attempt one. Well, that was horrible. Now, I'm gonna try to learn how to do a muscle up without doing a single pull up. Yep. Now, my sole aim was to get myself over the bar. So this is not one of those videos where I spent 826 days to learn the perfect muscle up. I wasn't aiming for a strict muscle up and I was allowed to use some momentum. Other than that, I had two simple rules. I would not do a single pull up before my first muscle up and I would only attempt to muscle up once a week. And that's it. I mean, the whole point of this experiment was to try some unconventional ways to learn the muscle up and see whether some of them would work. And apparently some of them do work because after only five weeks I did my first muscle up. Here's how. First, I started intermittent fasting. I figured that if I could shed some excess fat, it would be easier to lift myself off the ground and perform the muscle up. I knew that the benefit would be marginal, but I just wanted to try every tool in the toolbox. Now, there are various ways to intermittent fast, but a popular version is to fast for 16 hours and then to have an eight hour eating window. So I set my eating window between 11 a.m. and 7 p.m. I also started climbing, more specifically, bouldering. It was uh, the best training for muscle up I could think of. Climbing strengthens your whole upper body and core with constant pulling motions, which was exactly what I needed for the muscle up. I've also seen countless videos where climbers perform muscle ups with no effort at all, like Magnus Mitbo doing a one arm muscle up. And some of my climber friends had told me that they had done their first muscle ups after picking up climbing. So that's what I did. I also kept track of every climb I did and the climbing grades. Green meant that I had successfully climbed the route and red meant that I didn't. Dark green meant that I had successfully climbed a route I had failed to climb previously. So essentially dark green meant progress. And with this spreadsheet I wanted to see whether my climbing progress would translate to the muscle up. Then I also wanted to try using visualization. It might sound weird that I could learn a skill just by thinking about it, but something like that has actually been found in studies. For instance, one study of golfers found that novice golfers who combined mental practice with physical practice performed better than those who only did physical practice. And as I kept researching, I also stumbled upon a blog post from Keenan Erickson, who had done exactly what I was trying to achieve. He had been trying to learn the ring muscle up, but despite watching several technique videos, he could not for the life of him finish the movement. But after some visualization practice, he got on the rings and did his first muscle up like it was easy. Easy. Now that got me pumped. So every morning I spent five minutes visualizing myself doing the muscle up. And yes, if you've seen my previous videos, this was also the time when I spent some time visualizing myself flying. Week two, attempt two. At this point, I started looking more into the muscle up technique. I mean, until this point, I had always thought that the best way to do a muscle up is to pull yourself vertically as explosively as possible and somehow get yourself over the bar that way. But then, but then um, I found this video on YouTube. The cue that I use in my mind is like slamming the trunk of a car. If you can think of that, just slamming the trunk. So according to this video, instead of trying to do an explosive pull up, I should keep my hands straight in the beginning and use my lats to guide me upwards. And when I'm high enough, ah, I just pull myself close to the bar. And and then to do the muscle up. I mapped all the muscles that are important in the muscle up and then created a workout routine that trained all those muscles. First of all, as the SimNet Nutrition's video had suggested, I started doing front lever raises or whatever these are called. This exercise trained the first stage of the muscle up or getting off the ground. To practice the pull in stage of muscle up, I did inverted rows on a barbell. Another exercise that I found really, really helpful was the Russian dip. The aim is to start from an L sit, and then push your head through, and then do a dip, and then somehow lower down. How do you get down? <laughs> uh, I, th I don't think I need to get down. That was pretty good. Okay. 
train the last stage of the muscle up, I did some barbell dips. And of course, muscle up also requires a great deal of core strength. And to train those core muscles, I did hollow rockers, gymnastic tucks, and supine rockers. Those are so hard. <laughs> Let's see if that new technique helps me at all. Now, I'm gonna do this exactly as I do it in my visualization. Chalk on my right hand, chalk on my left hand, right hand on the bar, left hand on the bar, spin, hello, and then... Ah, okay, then. <laughs> that's just terrible. At this point, I, I really thought that uh, learning the muscle up would take months. Intermittent fasting wasn't really affecting my weight as I had hoped. In fact, I was about the same weight as when I started and it didn't really fit my daily schedule. Sometimes it's, uh, it's a bit hard to fit in all of my eating into an eight hour eating window. For instance, now I'm walking to the gym. I just ate a big bowl of muesli, but in order to get all of my food consumed today, I also have to eat this, this stew while I'm walking to the gym. And then after, when I get back from the gym, guess what I'll be doing? Eating. Another thing I don't like about intermittent fasting are the fasted morning workouts. And I mean, I just, I just feel quite sluggish without eating before my morning workout. And I can't do any intense workouts in the morning because I would need carbs to do that, which I do not have because I'm fasting. My hands are super cold. I have this almost every morning if I'm fasting. And it's, it's a bit distracting if I'm trying to work or, well, do anything with my hands, really. So, uh, I stopped intermittent fasting. But despite all of this, my climbing was improving rapidly. My first 5A. Took me five days, but I finally did that 5B. I think part of the reason why you progress so fast in climbing in the beginning is that you just uh, you just have, have more confidence in, in, in your grip strength or grip and your foot placement. And then you can just climb the harder climbs. That's it. Took me like 40 minutes, but I did it. Oh, that was tough. This is what's so good about climbing. You get this instant gratification every time you climb a climb that you can do the day before. And I, I mean, in the beginning you get that every, every time you climb. I'm really sorry to interrupt your viewing experience. I just have a quick update. I just created a members only area for this channel and I'll be uploading some extra content there. For instance, I've uploaded an extended cut of this very video you're now watching on the members area, which goes a bit more in depth and has some more footage. I'm also planning on uh, posting some short video updates there and uh, exclusive discussion posts for, for us to discuss stuff. So if you do enjoy my content and you would like to see more of it, you can become a member of the Unlazy crew by clicking the join button on my uh, channel's homepage. Check it out! In just three weeks I had gone from climbing four A's to climbing six A's, which also meant that my grip and pulling strength were improving. But you know, I kept adding more exercises to my routine. To improve grip strength, I started doing dead hangs, active hangs and deadlift. I also took my visualization to the next level. In addition to visualizing myself doing the movement in first person, I started visualizing myself doing it in third person. The weirdest thing was that I actually felt excited when I successfully did a muscle up in my visualizations. I mean, I got, I got butterflies in my stomach every time I did it. But the biggest game changer was probably this video from 10X. That's where I'm gonna put the magic button. You're gonna swing this foot forward and then step right into the magic button. That was like the missing piece. Taking a small step forward to initiate the muscle up and then following up with an explosive L-sit would give me some momentum and probably make the muscle up a lot easier. And with this technique, I was actually getting close. That was so close. After that attempt, I knew I could do the muscle up. It was just a matter of time. And yeah, the technique was quite sketchy, but I mean, for this challenge, my whole mission was to get above the bar. So I kept visualizing, lifting weights and climbing. <laughs> the 
That was a that was a huge milestone. <laughs> I think it's week five, attempt five. What the hell? I just did a muscle up without a single pull up. <laughs> oh my god. I can't even explain. I don't understand. It was like exactly like I visualized it, you know? I, it kind of felt like I, I had already done it. Yeah, I mean, it, it, like the moment I got it, it already felt like I had done it before. I think I have one attempt. Yeah, one attempt. It was a bit more sketchy than the first one, but oh my goodness, I can't even describe this feeling. It's like a dream come true. true. Okay. 